The following show is a Pod Avenue production. You are cordially invited to have dinner with the king. Pull up a chair and join WWE Hall of Famer Jerry the King Lawler and Glenn Moore. Enjoy. Welcome to Dinner with the King. Yes, we are back. The King is back from Saudi Arabia, alive and well. And if you listened <laughs> to last week's podcast, we had Jim Cornette on the show, and we talked about the King's upcoming trip to Saudi Arabia, and a little bit worried about being the King in Saudi Arabia, but we're going to yes. talk about that and all the rest of the stuff. But King, you know, I'm up here in Cleveland this week because I've been sick for about a week. How can, you know what? I, this is something I can't understand. The weather in Cleveland this year has been horrible. Snow, rain, sleet, hail, everything, and you were fine. And now this week it's 82 degrees in Cleveland today, and you're under the weather. How can that happen? Yeah, King, it was 70 degrees, and I'm laying in bed freezing. Because Terrible. I'm sick, and you know we didn't record on our usual day, which is a Tuesday, and we were supposed to have Terry Funk come on the show but because we pushed back our recording to Wednesday, like we're recording right now, we got to reschedule Terry Funk, and my voice is all screwed up. So <laughs> I'm a, a little bit weather. And that's why. That's that why didn't I, sound like a real cough. That oh, sounded no. like a fake cough. <laughs> no, it's real. It's definitely, definitely real. I So, no, uh, I'm not down in uh, not Nashville. Uh, not, not down in Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis. Because I'm, uh, I don't want to get the king sick. And you know what? You're, 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 you have the worst timing. This is Memphis in May. I know. I mean, we're starting Memphis in May, man. This week is a big Beale Street Music Festival. We got Memphis in May Barbecue Festival coming up. It's the, the whole month. Even uh, not just CNN, but some big some big magazine, but CNN too, have reported as well that Memphis was voted the the best place in the world to visit during the month of May. Oh wow! In the yeah. world. Like better than Paris or better than, you know, Hawaii or anything. Better, Memphis than, May. better than Cleveland. Better than Cleveland, yes. Uh, and no. we, are, we, we are recording. I'm sure that you there in Cleveland have your TV on and you're watching uh, you're watching the Indians game right at the moment as we speak, right? Spanking the Rangers. <laughs> yes, they are. Uh, but no, and I also have an update on our WrestleMania bet. I've lost three pounds. Hey. In the past uh, week Man. and a half. And that, I'm I'm pretty sure that is because I've been sick and not eating that much at all and just been drinking liquids. But hey, three pounds is three pounds, man. That's good. You're well on your way to a front row seat at WrestleMania. Well, <laughs> no, well, be at WrestleMania. Whoa, front, front, front row. row. Okay, no. I know. You have to lose. You have to file a missing person report to get that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but King, you had a uh, speaking of you know sickness and going to the doctor. You uh, today you had a little appointment. You want to share what? Uh, yeah, we're going? we're sort of recording this a little bit late because I had my my first follow up visit with a neurologist today, Doctor Weaver here in Memphis, that uh, came to see me. You know, while I was in the in the intensive care and everything with my stroke, and so they got me there and I had to go in just kind of you know check me over. I had to get a CAT scan today. But the cool thing, he showed me the picture, you know, he brought me back and let me look at the CAT scan and showed me a picture of my brain. And this was not something I wanted to hear. He said, he said, let me show you your brain and your brain damage. Mm. And I said, what? And he said, yeah, say, take a look. And, and so anyway, he showed me, you know, the scan of my brain and there was a spot on a dark spot on it about the size of a quarter, he said. And, um, uh, and he said, when, when you were in the hospital, that spot was just solid white because it was, you know, solid blood. And he said, now the blood has been absorbed. And now that's just the cells that were damaged. And I said, so, so that, that amount of cells were damaged. He said, oh yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> he said, but, but he said, you're just really fortunate in the fact that, uh, it wasn't like further. He said, if that, you know, that amount, that size, if it had been further down, in inside your brain or something, he said you could have lost the whole use of the whole left side of your entire body, you know. And so he said it's just weird the way strokes work, you know, just little minute uh, the amount of size or whatever that, you know, or wherever it is in your brain, it, it just makes a huge difference on what, you know, what gets uh, affected. So. 
he, you know, he asked me, you know, and I, I was like, I, I was like, I have no, you know, no, uh, I don't know, no residual effects at all. So I'm lucky. Yeah. Very lucky, man. I mean, so yeah, I, he said, you know, he said, you don't need to come back to see me anymore. I oh, said, really? Okay, cool. Yeah. So he's not, so obviously he's not worried about you having another stroke or, you know, any complications from this, right? No, it just, he just, he said, don't forget your blood pressure medicine. I said, okay, I got you. Well, that's good. I'm sure a lot of people are happy to hear that. And I'm going to, on my Twitter account, I'm going to, I'm going to tweet out the picture of my CAT scan. So let everybody later on this evening, when the podcast comes out, I'll tweet that out and let everybody see my brain damage. (laughs) Well, like I said, uh, we're all, we're all happy that there's not going to be any complications. You can continue to wrestle and do what you, uh, do what you do. And And it's like a great excuse. Anytime I have any problems from now on, I can just blame it on my brain damage. Oh, and I won't be lying. <laughs> Come on, you got to give me, you got to cut me some slack. I got brain damage. <laughs> well, you could say, hey, man, I had a cardiac arrest. You know, c- you know, c- yeah. cut me some slack. But you know, brain damage sounds a little more serious. Yeah, Jr. used to say that about me on the show. Sometimes he says, "You, Jerry Law, are rumored to have a slight amount of brain damage." <laughs> uh, speaking of, uh, speaking of, uh, you and Jr. Uh, you know, we're talking about the greatest Royal Rumble, your trip to Saudi Arabia. But uh, first, I, was I should re- I should plug too the fact that I uh, he called me this morning and I did his podcast. This is is going to be dropping a little bit later on today, I think, as well. And so um, we talked to, about a few things on on Jr's podcast as well. So if you want to give that a listen, what's it called? The Ross Report, right? Ross Report. Ross Report. Sauce. <laughs> no, we don't say that. Sauce. He says this. Hee-haw! There you go. Well, I'm sure you had a lot of hee haws because uh, you both you guys. <laughs> traveled on the same uh, flight all the way to Saudi Arabia, I guess from Houston or from Germany, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the man, we were, we were together the whole time and it was, I mean, thank goodness. It was, it was really good. I mean, I would have really hated to just be doing that trip by myself. I'd have been bored stiff, but yeah, I flew, um, what? flew to what? <laughs> yeah, it would have been. Bored stiff. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> That's when you join the Mile High Club if you're getting bored <laughs> stiff. But anyway, we flew. I flew from Memphis to Houston, and that's where I met up with Jr. and and um, also uh, Booker T. Kind of flew along with us. But somehow, me and me and Jr. were able to kind of finagle ourselves in seats next to each other, and Booker T. Oh, was across across the way. But Booker slept a lot uh, on the on the flight. He was cool. He and he had some movies to watch and everything. But yeah, the, thank thank goodness for. You know, first class and business class because that would have been an uh, unbelievable trip without that. I can, I just do not see how people can can make those kind of trips just sitting in a coach seat. Even though I mean, you know, it's just I mean, you would just be so cramped and confined and not able to get up and down and do anything for so long. We flew to Houston, which I had to fly from Memphis to Houston backwards. Uh, that was a two-hour flight. Then met up with Jr. We got on a flight in Houston and flew to Frankfurt, Germany. And that was about a 10 and a half hour flight uh, over to Frankfurt. And then we got off the plane in Frankfurt and got on the plane to Saudi Arabia. And that was another almost seven hour flight. And, uh, and, you know, the crazy thing was like, you know, anybody that travels a lot, you, you, you hate airport security, but, and, and, you know, most of the places, like when I go out of the country, a lot of times you go to Canada or something like that. And security and customs and all that is horrible. It takes forever. You know, they check everything about you, especially going in and out of Canada, back to the United States and everything. But it was so crazy. We flew from, from the United States to got, just got off the plane in Frankfurt, Germany, and we were just walking around the airport. Nobody said anything to us. And we went out of security and then got, then got to, went to another terminal, got on a little thing and went to another terminal, went like right through security, just so easy. It, uh, it, like going into, going into Saudi Arabia and going into Germany, it was like, it was like a breeze. It was like, no questions asked. Just, hey, go, boom, there you go. And, uh, but then man, coming back to the United States, it's crazy. We got pulled out of line and well, Coming and then coming back, we had to go from Jeddah, Saudi Arabia to Paris, and then Paris to Atlanta, and and apparently it's just like something when you when you're coming when you're a passenger coming from Saudi Arabia, they, they gave us like the triple security coming through when we got to Paris before we came you know came on the flight to the United States. Jr. got so mad, this guy just 
grabbed his grabbed his his uh, hat and was just crumpling it up. Oh no. Uh, Oh yeah, he said, and the guy didn't even speak any English. And Jr. is trying to tell him that's not the way you handle a hat. You don't do, you know, blah blah blah. But the guy just he, he didn't care. Good God, good God is right. But no, uh, traveling with Jr. was it was good. He he we was we it was good company, and and we had a it made the flight go by pretty quick. Watched the uh, you know solid movies or TV shows. I watched about nine episodes of the 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 sitcom Mom. I love that show. Have you ever seen Mom? Uh, it sounds. Who, who's in it? Uh, I love the show, but I can't tell you the actress's name. It's uh, you know, it's the blonde-headed girl. She's she's just she's just starring in the movie that's going to be coming out called Overboard. Um, what is her name? Uh, Cute little girl. Uh, I think. I think yeah. she just got. I think she just got divorced. Oh, Anna Faris. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I I actually I watched a few episodes of that the other day. It is so funny. Uh, it's okay. They're uh, they're both reco- her and her mom who live together are like recovering alcoholics and they go to you know Alcoholics Anonymous meetings and that sort of stuff. And, but it was uh I like like you know there's enough time I just kept watching them back to back all these episodes of Mom and and then I watched Thor I watched the movie Thor. What other movie? Oh my gosh! Have you seen the uh, this uh, guy? I couldn't. Uh, I'm trying to watch something on my screen. The guy next to me is watching. Uh, the King Kingsmen. Okay, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Did you see that movie? Yeah, I've seen those. Yeah, those are that cool. was a weirdest movie. I, I didn't even know what it was. I'm just, all of a sudden, I just kept looking over at his screen. I'm thinking, what in the world is this guy watching? And then I realized it was it was Kingsman. That was a weird movie. Really weird. Okay. So at least you're able to entertain yourself and have some yes. have some buddies on your on your flights to Saudi Arabia. Well, the first a first selfie from Jr. I noticed you're on your phone, and I was like, "Wow, the king is taking his phone. He's going to brave it out and take his phone to Saudi Arabia." Because you know, we mentioned on the podcast, you're kind of afraid to. Did we tell everybody why I was afraid to? Or uh, should I, I, think I don't think we did. We didn't. We didn't um, come out and say it. We wanted to keep it somewhat PG, but I think you hinted towards why. Well, I mean that that's one of the two things we we did talk about the fact that um, that they're very strict on in in Saudi Arabia. You cannot bring any kind of illicit or illegal drugs into the country. I mean, if you're just a visitor, you could get the death penalty yeah. for bringing you drugs or what was the other thing? Oh, pornography. And 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 I'm not, you know, I'm not I'm not trying to make this sound bad, but I mean, it, it, just a picture of a of a female not completely clothed is pornography there. Yeah. I mean, and you know, I mean, heck, I, I mean, you go, you scroll through anything on the internet and you're liable to have, I mean, I've had got people send me uh, these funny videos and, you know, just all sorts of stuff. Then there could be, I'm just thinking there could be anything on your phone. And I'm wondering if all of a sudden they take your phone away and go through and find a picture of a, a female with not, you know, not clothed from head to toe. And all of a sudden say, oh, this is pornography off with your head. So I was worried, but they never it was that was never a never an issue it was like never an issue at all they they treated the WWE talent like like we were real kings and everything they they loved us over there those the people in in Saudi Arabia I, they were as just as nice as they could be as friendly as they could be big fans and it was like well one of the things i was i was you know uh concerned about you know we we talked about um you know, in the past, their their treatment or the way that they did females in their country, you know, they weren't allowed to drive or anything like that. But, but man, at the show, there were women, children, the families. You know, it was a big. They were they were all at, all at the show. I saw them in, in the in the uh, restaurant. They weren't all you know like all completely covered up in the burkas and all that stuff. It was you know it was like a. I, I think they're. I they think they re- they really want to be westernized, you know, more so like like we are here. And I think they're moving in that direction. I really do. Um, the other thing is like their TV. I mean, you know, uh, beautiful the the hotel we stayed in, beautiful rooms. Uh, and I'm I'm watching the um, you know watching their TV and and it was crazy because you know you heard so much and worried about how how they treated people, but then. Heck, they had MTV on and, um, you know, uh, 
girls dancing and singing and, and, and all of this kind of stuff, uh, the Disney channels. And, uh, so I was, you know, I was watching some TV, CNN and all, all I mean, you know, they, they had, uh, a, a lot of stuff that was Westernized like we are. Well, it, that's interesting when you say that, and I'm, they, when the WWE ran a, um, a promo for like a show and they, they showed some women wrestlers. Uh, oh, I did see that they did make an apology for that. Yeah, the sports authority. Well, I mean, you know, I think that there are, um, you know, this that's that's a that's a tradition, or or it's I think it's a, a a religion type thing that's been there since the beginning of time, and it's hard to change those those kind of things. And so, uh, you know, that's just that's just the way that they've been accustomed to living for from forever. Uh, and and I don't know how that happened that the commercial got in our show that had you know that showed women wrestlers, and I'm sure that we had agreed not to do that you know just to to uh, basically uh, you know show that we respected their their ways and that sort of thing. But still, it did uh, it did get shown, and they they apologized and WWE apologized for it. But there was no I mean I didn't they had a they had a. a newspaper in English uh, and and man they they just you know they they treated the WWE like it was a Super Bowl here uh, the greatest thing ever to come to the the country now I, I mentioned this before we started the show and this is something I read a couple of days ago online um, how the prince he personally wanted you and jr he wanted to he wanted he wanted quote the commentator with the crown <laughs> and quote the commentator with the black hat on the show. So you had the Saudi prince wanting, you know, basically ordering WWE for you and uh, Jr. to make. <laughs> no, wait a minute. I don't think they ordered anybody to do anything. But no, w- what it did show, and 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 watching the young fans there now, they are they are really into and follow closely everything that's going on in the WWE. That's, it's, I'll bet it's, uh, you know, I'll bet it's one of their biggest, uh, highest rated shows in the entire country. Uh, when they, they watch all the WWE programming and the, and the, and the network as well. And, and it has been that way for a long time. And that's what it showed JR and I was the, uh, apparently one of the, I don't know if it was a Prince or Sheik or whoever, but one of the people that originally spoke with, with the WWE and Vince and, and those people about bringing the show to Saudi Arabia were asking about certain talent. And it was, it was like, it was like they were asking about talent from, uh, you know, years ago. So they've been watching this stuff for years. And, and I think they, they ask about a couple, I think they ask about Yokozuna and I believe they, you know, Vince, I think said, well, he's, he's dead. And then they asked, you know, because they were wanting all the big, you know, like the biggest uh, names. And then they ask about the guy that shakes the ropes and paints his face and everything. And that's like Ultimate Warrior. And they say, yeah, and well, he's dead too. And then, uh, you know, the story went, that at least what I heard was, they said, well, what about the, uh, the guy that with the, wears the crown and the guy that wears the cowboy hat? And uh, they said, well, we, they're still alive. I think we can get them, you know. So, uh, yeah, it was it was like actually uh, asked for or, or or whatever you know we were mentioned in the in the names that they were familiar with scrooge screw john cena we want the guy with the crown <laughs> <laughs> oh no they they man they they knew everybody over there it was just i mean you know here was a crowd of 60,000 fans in this stadium and they were you know they were exactly like a uh a crowd in Chicago or Memphis or anywhere. I mean, it was just like, you know, when, when Kurt Angle came out, it was like, you know, uh, you suck, you suck. And, um, I, it was funny. John, John was, uh, John was more received better. I think there than he is, you know, in a lot of the cities here in America, but no, they, they're up on everything, man. They were, they were really knowledgeable about WWE. My favorite part of the crowd were the Sheiks ringside, the royal, yeah. the royal family ringside. Now, they didn't clap for anybody. They were they, they for a few. They clapped for a few guys, um, but they it was amazing because like usually 
you know, the super fans, the Marks, are in the first few rows, and they're trying to get themselves over with their, you know, jackets. Oh, no, 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 none of that no, over there. Not at no, all. no, the entire floor, the entire floor of the stadium, which would have seen, which, you know, you could have put thousands and thousands of seats on the floor, which we do like for WrestleMania or something like that. The floor was empty with the exception of maybe a, a couple of hundred big plush easy chairs that most people would have in their den or something like that. Right. That was their, that was a few of those ringside seats around the ring. And that the entire floor was reserved for the Royal family. Their, their, you know, their immediate family and relatives and all of that stuff. So that was what the floor of the whole stadium was about. And yeah, they reacted different, but there was, I mean, you know, there were some kids in the, in the Royal family and everything. They were, they were all going crazy and, and that sort of thing. And I, I, it was because the floor was so empty. I just, uh, I've just went out and watched about 80% of the show, uh, just standing behind ringside in my, in my whole gear and my crown and everything. And then, then of course it was like, it had to take a hundred or maybe more than a hundred selfies, but it was cool. I was, it was just really neat to, uh, and, and then, and then stand there doing selfies. It was about, you know, maybe, I don't know. And maybe half of the people, you know, that came up and asked for a selfie spoke English. Mm. Uh, so, so it was, it was, it was fun just to interact with them and, there was a lot of security, man. They did a major, major security sweep of the entire stadium before the royal family got there. And uh, and and as Jr. and I said, it was the first time that we ever had to pass through a metal detector and be wanded from the time you left the dressing room to go out to the announce position. Oh wow! But yeah, you had to do. You had to go through that every time you went. Every time you went out. Uh, so I was watching the pre-show, obviously, because you're on it, and Jr. and Booker T. And you know, uh, you know, this is an hour before the show began, and <laughs> right. you know, and I'm I I, I sent you the screenshot while you're uh, you know talking, but um, you know, we we talked about it on the show was you know first you're kind of hesitant of taking your phone over there, and second, you know, we didn't know if you could be the king because of right. you're asking to you know disrespect the the royal family. Well, right. not only do you take your phone, but here's you know Jerry the King Lawler, you know, as Jerry the King Lawler, wearing his crown, wearing the jacket. And behind you, and I'm not sure if that was like the royal family security or he was. Know. Yeah, it was, I think he was definitely a security guy. And here's you know this this t- very tall man uh, <laughs> looking at you, staring you down through you know a hole in the back of your head. And I sent you the screenshot, and I'll, I'll post it to our. Well, I think I did post it to our Twitter. But yeah, he, we need to do it again though. Now that people know what we're yeah, talking about, and you're talking, and you kind of <laughs> had the look on your face like you're like, oh. But the guy in the background is like staring right at oh, you. Oh, I had no clue that he was back there until I got that picture from you. If I had known that he was standing that close behind me and just staring a hole through me like that, I would have been nervous. But no, I, I didn't know it. But I, still, though, uh, man, they couldn't have treated us any better. And, the you know, the fans were they, – I mean, they got a big – when I first went out there in my whole King outfit, big cheer, and then they got the – the Jerry chant going like the Jerry Springer deal. It was, it was cool. It was, it was just like being, it was just like doing a show anywhere in the United yeah. States. So no problem being the King. No, they loved it. That's awesome. Well, that's good. Um, <laughs> yeah. So the Sheik drinks, I were great because like, you know, as like, like I said, the marks that sit there for, you know, regular shows or like clapping for anybody or, you know, being over, overzealous or you know over exuberant for certain wrestlers and here's here comes john cena and the guy sitting in the first row is like yeah okay john cena who cares <laughs> not even clapping or he's on his phone or like some guys would stand up and turn their back to the ring like on the phone or like you know talking to the guy next to him but it was just th- that was kind of like his own show uh for people watching at home watching like people ringside and some people were upset on social media they should put fans ringside but I mean, like, if you're, they're paying millions of dollars to put a show on, of course, they can sit ringside. They can sit anywhere they want in the whole damn place. Sure, exactly. Uh, and that was another thing. That was another thing that you noticed. Uh, you know, that's I'm, – I'm looking around and seeing what similarities there are between, uh, you know, their culture and ours and, and, and what differences there are. But I'll tell you one thing just exactly like we have over here. Man, they are on their cell phones constantly. 
everybody over there has a cell phone. They're either taking selfies or they're talking or they're texting or whatever. They're, they're, everybody there is on the cell phone all the time. How was the, I was, uh, I know you got there, what, Thursday? So did you go out to dinner? I know it was a huge dinner for a lot of the oh, WWE. The, the, the hotel, I mean, we didn't even have to leave our hotel. Our hotel, um, uh, the dinner started at like 7 o'clock. JR and I got there maybe about 5.30 in the afternoon on Thursday. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, you know, you just went up, kind of unpacked a little bit, and then you came down and, and dinner was starting. When when I say dinner, they just had this big – uh, layout, man. I don't, I guess you would call it sort of like a buffet. It was just, uh, like if you can imagine the biggest buffet at any casino you've ever been to every kind of food you can think of. And that was, I, that was another thing that I was really leery of on, on their way, on the way from the airport, uh, to the hotel, this, uh, and, and, and another thing, I mean, you know, it just looked like you're, you picked up in a nice, uh, a nice, uh, like, wasn't a limousine. It was like a big, nice SUV. Picked Jr. and I up, and the guy was real friendly, but he didn't speak any English at all. But uh, he kept looking back and smiling. And their interstates, I mean, the roads look just like they do here. You drive, they, you know, the cars have the, had the um, uh, steering wheel on the left side, just like we do. It wasn't like being in Europe where you drive on the wrong side of the road or anything. Right. Just like here. So that was. That was reassuring. And then all of a sudden we're driving along and, and I see a McDonald's. And I said, oh, McDonald's, I could live here. I can make it. You know, I could, I could do that. And then um, but but the one thing that you notice immediately is no grass. There's no, you know, there's everything is brown. And I mean, because I guess you're in the middle of the desert or whatever. But there's just, you know, there's there's the only greenery is the palm, tops of palm trees. And uh, but man, their homes, they they live in these big a lot of these big compounds that I guess hold an entire uh, extended family or whatever live, that live in these big homes that are just so opulent. And I mean, you know, you can tell it's a it's a very rich, a rich country over there. Uh, but anyway, we got there and then the, then the food is what I was what I was really worried about. But it was amazing everything you could think of i mean just amazing all sorts of seafood fish crab legs lobster and they would prepare it for you right there or they had it already made and just all of this uh all of this great food steaks everything um was out there and it started at seven o'clock and it and it stayed out you could you could eat until 11 p.m and trust me that the three of us that kind of hung out together was me JR and Paul Heyman. And trust me, Paul ate from 7 to 11. Oh, come on. Oh, my goodness, man. He was really putting it away. He really was. <laughs> a lot of people were wondering if Paul was to make the trip since he's Jewish. Um, oh, yeah. A lot of people were saying, oh, Paul's not going to be. There's a lot of false information being spread around. The... You know, this is probably the biggest Can you event. imagine that? False information on the Internet? Well, you I know, can't believe Everybody it. was wrong from Dave Meltzer to all the dirt sheets. I mean, People reporting wrong things throughout the week. I mean, this is probably the biggest event effect when it comes to like people spoiling stuff. There were no spoilers, um, you know, and a lot of the a lot of the people re reporting stuff were completely wrong, right? Um, throughout the right. weekend, so it was, you know, people were reporting stupid stuff. Um, but the biggest, <laughs> the the one, you know, this whole we're not talking about the whole pay per view, but you know, you and I talked about it opening the show uh before we went on the air was titus o'neill making his big oh, splash big splash i like it <laughs> uh, and slipping or tripping and sliding oh, underneath the ring man. uh which, which i that, guess was a big hit with vince backstage yes it was fun well it wasn't just a big hit with vince it was a big hit with everybody everybody just thought that that was the funniest thing they'd ever seen. And I, I, I was right there with them. It was one of the funniest things that I've ever seen. You know what? Today I saw online, I saw a, um, a funny little cartoon. It was, it was of course, cartoon characters, but you could tell who they I mean, you know, it looked just like them. But it was uh, Titus O'Neil standing there being handed the torch from the Shockmaster. Yeah. Did you ever see that? Oh yeah, I saw. I think somebody tweeted out at dinner with King. I saw that. Yeah. Oh okay. Yeah, that, I thought that was funny. And you know what? This I know you're going to think this is crazy, but 
I had never, even though I sat next to him at a, at a, um, at a comic con one year and he was sitting there selling and signing the autographed masks. Uh, but I had never seen the video of the shock master. Really? Never in your life? I'd never, I had never seen it until like yesterday. And I saw that and, and Peyton and I were sitting on the couch and, and it, somebody was showing because of the, you know, because of the Titus O'Neil stuff and Peyton, he, uh, he did not get to see the show, uh, the greatest world alone because he was in school. So he hadn't seen the Titus O'Neill thing either. And I'm going to tell you the kid and me too, we both watched the shock master and then we watched Titus and then we went shock master Titus back and forth. We laughed for literally nonstop for like 30 minutes on watching those two videos. But uh, yeah, it, it was, I, it was, it was just, it was just funny. It was like, all the baseball and football bloopers rolled into one. Oh, there's that Shockmaster has been uh, ah. dissected by a lot of people <laughs> involved. I think that was Dusty Rhodes' idea. Of course, it was. Yeah. And the person that was doing the voice of the Shockmaster was Arn Anderson. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, and uh, that was Fred Ottman, who was the guy that yes. was playing yeah, Fred. Shockmaster. Yeah, Fred. And you know what's the cool thing is he's capitalized on that. Oh, and yeah. I actually, I actually sent. Um, you know, I actually sent a, a text message to Titus on Saturday about, you know, about that same thing. I mean, I'm sure without a doubt he, he was humiliated and, you know, uh, felt like he's the butt of the worldwide jokes and all of that sort of thing. But I, I, I honestly, when I, when I saw it and after I laughed and, and, and then, you know, me being the old 20 year territory owner and 20 year promoter, I immediately was trying to think of, you know, what you could do. How could you capitalize on this on this thing? And so I sent I sent a text message to Titus with an idea that I had uh, on how he could, you know, how he could turn this negative into a positive. And then I sent the idea on to uh, some of the writers there at the WWE, and they wound up on Monday night doing a version of what, you know, what I talked about. And it was just, you know, it, it was, it was a thing that, well, like the Shockmaster, that video will live forever. So why not turn it around and, and you know, make something positive out of them? Now they've already got him a, they've already got him a T-shirt, and, uh, uh, you know, I can, I can see a lot of other opportunities that could come out of this thing. And that's what I told him. I when in my text, I said, you know, Titus, some things, sometimes things happen for a reason. And you got to be you got to be an opportunist, and you got to be able to make a positive out of a negative. And and you know, I, I gave him my ideas, and 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 I think that's you know, I think that's what they're going to try to do with this thing. Uh, one thing, you know, if he would have done that with the regular ring presentation where they have the video boards on the three sides of the ring, if he would have fell into the video board like for a raw or a regular pay per view. He could have been seriously oh, hurt, broken neck. Could have broken, or, could have broken his neck. He was going 100 miles an hour down there. Uh, so he's very fortunate that, A, there wasn't a video board, and, B, you know, usually there's stuff underneath the ring. I'm sure there was, but it didn't seem to slow him down when he slid underneath the ring. So, I mean, you know, there's, what, ladders under there and chairs. and Yeah, and I I think that he did hit something with his head, I believe he said later, you know, that, that, uh, <laughs> that finally stopped his – his slide, but that was one another thing. Can you imagine? Uh, I, I think he could get an endorsement out of the, out of this. I don't know who makes slip and slides, Hasbro or somebody. But uh, you know, can you imagine the commercial they could make with with uh, Titus O'Neil, and 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 even tied in with SummerSlam. You know, have him in the backyard with a bunch of kids, and they're doing a slip and slide, and they've built themselves a little ring, and they're sliding underneath it, and with uh, with Titus leading the way. I mean. I think there's just a lot of things that they could they could do with that. Oh my God, they could build a whole slip and slide, inflatable, and at the end, like you said, to include on the slip and slide like a little miniature raw sign with a little bit of like a, like a little flag, like not a flag, but like a, a curtain. Sure. And all you sorts could of things slide right into underneath the ring or into like the wall. Hey, that was that was one of the ways that the new day became a big hit. You know, remember those crazy commercials they used to do? Yeah, the, the the you know crazy stuff like the unicorns yeah. on top of their head and yeah, the man, cereal. Put, put put Titus out there 
like George Foreman plugging the Titus O'Neil slip and slide. I mean, I would buy Instead that. Instead of the George Foreman grill, you got a Titus slip and slide. I would buy that. There you go. I mean, I should we get? I should get some. You and I should get some royalties or something if they ever do that, shouldn't we? I mean, that, that's a. I mean, that's a legit good idea for <laughs> for for him to make some money and also to promote a product. I mean. I, I, like like you said, I mean, a lot and a lot of guys are kind of scared about, you know, being a comedy act when they want to be a serious or a champion. But I mean, hey, wrestling is about making money, man. If you can make money, um, exactly something that happens, you should definitely you know go all over because this could be one a one shot deal. This this you know unless you do it on purpose again. But <laughs> this is the only this is a one time thing. And also, you know, Vince showed it six times and. You know, he was a good sport about it. So you already have Vince's approval with you right. know, doing it. And they're already. And I, I, I'm, I'm looking back at my text that I sent him. I said, Titus, as someone who owned and booked the territory for 20 years, I can tell you that this could be gold. So, social media could eat this thing up. And I said, it would show that that you're an opportunist and able to turn negatives into positive. And I said, plus, it shows a trait that people find admirable in others, and that is the ability to laugh at themselves. And I told him I thought about this on the plane ride home while watching the movie Thor. I mean, in the movie Thor, he bumbled and fumbled throughout the entire movie, and you couldn't help but laugh at him. But in the end, he kicked ass, and and you know, and you liked him even more because he he wasn't invincible. I mean, he was he was a human enough to to be made fun of, but then you know, the fans could relate to that. And, and so, uh, you know, that was, that was one of the ways I was, I was telling, um, uh, you know, that was one of the ways I was telling Titus that this could turn into a, a big positive to him. And King, I mean, he could, uh, you know, once this run its course, you know, through SummerSlam through the summer months, I mean, he could turn, you know, turn into a heel and say, you know, y'all, you're making fun of me. Everybody was laughing at me. He could, you know, even take it. To well, another route. exactly. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, endless number of things that you could turn this into it's no sense in letting it just go on and and uh you know be the butt of a, a joke i mean and i think they've already realized that in the fact that they you know they started monday night on raw and they got a t-shirt coming out and i, and I think it I, I think it's it's funny you know a year from now titus o'neill may look back and say man the greatest thing that ever happened to me was falling down the ramp at the greatest royal rumble yeah i'm sure his bank account would like it too yeah, <laughs> uh, but no, like wrapping up the greatest Royal Rumble, just a great. I mean, it, it was five hours long, and what a good. But w- w- hey, what a good show! Oh my gosh, I loved. I mean, like I said, I got to stand out there and watch a lot of the matches where I ordinarily don't. Excuse me, that I don't get to do, you know, and stand that close and and uh, and not be bothered by fans or anything like that, or or be making selfies with fans or whatever. But it was it was all cool. But I got to see. Uh, you know, some of the finishes of the match. I loved the Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns match. Yeah, the cage match. Oh, my gosh. It was great. Um, I loved it. And I'm not sure if that was supposed to be the finish. It was supposed to be scripted that way, or is that it was a botched finish? Because Reigns' feet did hit first, but they reward, awarded Lesnar the championship. I don't think his feet hit first. No, it did. I mean, it, Reigns speared him and then rolled over. Lesnar's feet was still on on the on the cage, you know, raised off the ground, and Reigns rolled over, and his feet touched first. So I'm, well, but, but on Monday, you know, it was a big controversy with Reigns. So I'm, I'm sure that was kind of like a storyline, you know, kind yeah. of thing. Um, I liked uh, the fifty man. I was waiting for you to come out. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was standing out there with my gear on. Uh, no, I, I didn't really have it on then. Hornswoggle but. came back. Yeah, that was cool. He didn't get eliminated, though. He was not eliminated, officially eliminated. He didn't? No, he didn't go over the top rope. He went through the middle rope. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and right. he was knocked off, and they say he was eliminated, but he was not officially eliminated. So, really, it could be, it should be Hornswoggle versus Braun Strowman, uh, which would be <laughs> yeah, a... That, that would be a good <laughs> match to watch. But, no, I, I thought the whole show I would, was... I would actually pay to see that. No, that would be, would be great. But five-hour show... And usually, like WrestleMania, I'm like tired out by midnight. I'm like, this is a long show, but having it on a, sat- a Friday afternoon, twelve to five Eastern time, I thought it was perfect. And I was like, wow, this is- it went by quick. It was a good show. Yes, it was good. And, and hey, Triple H and John Cena starting the show off 
that set you know that set the pace they were, it just i thought it was really good really really good uh any final thoughts about the greatest Royal rumble any any other stories you want to share uh well you know i i guess they signed a, a 10-year deal to go back and do it uh to do it every year now for the next 10 years um i just hope i'm around to go and go and do it again next year i i, I want to you know once i if i go next year i want to get out a little more and kind of explore saudi arabia a, a little better and i'll bet you that that next year you know i want to get out a little more and and just kind of explore and and look around saudi arabia and i'll bet you this time next year it'll be it'll be a, a totally different environment over there um they're talking about going back in november oh i guess uh, the sports authority announced that they're they're coming back in november Oh, that's cool. So, uh, well, maybe I'll get to go back again. Yeah, um, well, they the prince wants you. Yeah, so, yeah, right. The uh, I it was. I mean, it was hot over there, and I'm sure it's even hot in November. But uh, I, I sent out a tweet. Some people saw it. I said, you know, there's no pyrotechnics needed over here. Just fire shoots up out of the ground. It's so freaking hot. But it was, uh, it, it it was hot. But then the cool thing was like. Uh, by the time we went out there to 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 start the show, uh, and I was really worried because you know, the sun was just kind like of beating down in the, into the uh, middle of that stadium. But then by the time we went out to start the show, we were in the shade. And then as the you know as the as the show progressed, it got shadier and then and then then the darkness. And man, I got some cool shots with my camera inside that stadium, the lighting and the and the, I don't know if you guys got to see on television or not, how the fireworks, I mean, they had huge outdoor fireworks outside the stadium as well, you know, that were, that were, that were fired off over the, over the crowd and over the stands and that kind of thing. It was just, it was just a cool show all in all. And I'm going to, I'm going to start sitting uh, later on today. I'm going to start tweeting out uh, all my pictures that I took from the, from the experience. Yeah. The, the pyro, you know, I know WWE doesn't use pyro that much for like raw or SmackDown and some pay-per-views, but it's amazing how pyro just enhances the show um, overall. Well, one of the, one of the pyro guys told me that this for that show, the most pyro the WWE has ever used on any show. Oh, I can imagine. Like almost every guy had their own like overhead pyro. <laughs> yeah, it, it was great. It it makes the show larger than life. I mean, yeah. Um, you know, I I know it's cost cutting. You know, for regular shows, but uh, I thought it was great. Did they have like I know for like WrestleMania in New York when it was like snowing. They had like heaters on the ring posts to keep the guys heated during in the ring. Um, did they do that for, like air conditioning or fans or anything like for the guys? In the I ring? did. I did see a note that said for the announcers that there would be air conditioning underneath the uh, announce tables where they were sitting. But to be perfectly honest with you, I don't. You didn't really need it. You know, they didn't. They didn't force anybody to wear tuxedos or anything like that. So they were just kind of in, in uh, you know, not something that would be totally burning up or anything but but by the time you know by the time the evening went around and the show started over there it, it was not that hot uh really quick other thing i like was when paul Heyman came out and it was like staring at you and jr cutting his promo yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're, just, you're just sitting there all smiling like okay yeah okay um, he like thank he like thanked me about a 50 times at, later on in the day oh I, I know why one one of the things was that was um the day of that show was like the 35th anniversary. The uh, And I don't remember this stuff. I mean, because I guess we did so many things over the years in Memphis that any any given day could be an anniversary of something, you know. Oh, yeah. But uh, but that was the 35th anniversary of the day they that Paul Heyman and Tommy Rich and Austin Idol cut my hair at the Mid-South Coliseum in Memphis. Oh, yeah, 35 years. Yeah, yeah. and so he just he kept talking about that and thanking me and, uh, and then, and then he thanked me for, you know, that, I guess the way I reacted to him doing that promo behind us and uh, during the, uh, you know, during the early in the show, yeah. I don't know. JR was, you know, he's not, he, obviously with his disability, he can't smile, but you know, JR's face was just like, okay, whatever, you know, uh, you know <laughs> and then you're like, okay, I'm just smiling, just waiting for him to stop. But no, you guys sold it well. It was, it was great. But also it was a great photo of you and, jr and paul at the i think the hotel are eating dinner too yeah man we we sat and talked for hours i mean there's you know nothing else to do we, we really did just sit at the table and talk for hours okay wrapping the show up uh last tidbit of news uh glenn jacobs also known as kane uh looks like he won the 
the primary for Republicans and yeah. uh, for Knox County mayor. Uh, he won by 17 votes. Ooh, that was close. Uh, as of I'm now. sure they'll and I'm sure they'll do a recount on that. Yeah, but 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 geez, I mean, I know he's very serious about politics, um, but as a, as a as a man like yourself that has run for mayor, uh, it has to be a cool feeling to know that you know someone that you worked with for many many years in WWE, but also a guy that has turned to politics and become successful. Yeah, I mean that 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 is cool. And the fact that that it's something you obviously wanted to do and to be to to win that because well especially in the past it's been it was almost impossible for somebody that wasn't a lifelong politician to win any kind of political race but I think with with you know with the in, in, influence of Donald Trump and and people getting just so being so tired of politics as usual and professional politicians. That I think that really helps somebody now these days to you know from the outside to go in and and as Glenn did I mean you know certainly not a politician in his entire life and then to go in and still win the race and and you know I, I think that's a uh, that's a pretty Republican area up there if he's the if he's the Republican um, candidate in during the regular elections it's probably a a uh, good possibility that he'll be the next county mayor up there. So um, the only thing I could say to Glenn is, I, I, you know, it's one of those, be careful what you wish for. I don't know. <laughs> I just, I, I, when I look back on the times that I ran and look at the way, you know, the political scene is, has been here in Memphis ever since, I think, man, that's the greatest thing that never happened to me. I just think, well, my gosh, what would I have done had I won that and been the, you know, had to be the mayor of the 17th largest city in the United States? Um, I, I don't, I don't know. I would, I. It's almost something that I say I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy, but Glenn's certainly not my worst enemy, so I'm wishing him, you know, all the luck with that and and uh, and hope that he really enjoys it. Um, the only bad thing about it is if he does win the, you know, being mayor, um, you know, I'm I'm sure that's going to come. His WWE career is going to come to an end, um, which I, you know, Kane's one of my favorite wrestlers of all time, the whole character. So it'd be sad to see him, you know, go from WWE because I don't, I don't think you can be a mayor and still wrestle. I mean, right? I mean, can you? Well, actually, I did check into that when I ran, and yes, you could. Uh, you could have um, another a source of income. And so, you know, maybe, and, and uh, I'm not sure. I, I know, I know that like here in Memphis, we have a county mayor and a city mayor. And, um, even though, even though the county is, is bigger than the city of, you know, is bigger than the city of Memphis, it's like the city mayor is, and the, and the city council are the ones that do, you know, have the, have the main control, um, uh, so I, I don't, I don't know, but I, I, I would think that, uh, that Glenn is, is, you know, if he was that serious about running that, that I would think that that's what he's looking at as his next career move. Could you imagine like your Knox, uh, you know, County <laughs> mayor, you know, Hey, he, you know, he's the mayor, but also on Monday night raw, he's being, being the, de the, you know, demon's favorite son or whatever he's called. Yeah. Kane. Uh, Can you imagine him showing up for like a city council meeting dressed as Kane? <laughs> Hey guys, just he wants to, he wants to get that. I want to get this budget approved here. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> and don't just, don't go against me. Just, <laughs> oh, that's great. But no, uh, congrats to Glenn, and hopefully, well, the there were forty thousand Republican votes, and only seven thousand Democratic votes. So I think you're right. I mean, it's a yeah. I think it's a very uh, a Republican county up there. Yeah. So so. All right, what cool. are you doing this weekend? Anything going on uh, for you yourself, Ken? This weekend, I'm uh, going to be wrestling down in Ripley, Mississippi on Friday night and somewhere on Saturday night, too. You don't know where? And then somewhere on su then somewhere Sunday. Man, I got a like, three-day weekend. Well, that's good. The, uh, your, uh, your doctor gave you the full go. Yeah. So you're all good to go. So anything you want? Any final words? Any final words? Final words. Um, can't think of anything special for coming up. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, we're glad that you made it back from Saudi Arabia in one piece. I know Jim Cornette is uh, happy too. 
And uh, looking forward to talking to you next week. We're going to reschedule Terry Funk, get him back on the yeah. show. Yeah. Gotta get him back on. I'm, hopefully it will get better. And the uh, oh, Baker Mayfield. Happy about him. Hey, yes. That was a that was a lot of the conversation between Jr. and I. Jr. is a big big fan and a big and a good friend of Baker Mayfield's. So he was just saying. He said, "Now, uh, I said, look, Jr. I know you're going to want to come to see some of his games in Cleveland, yeah. and I know you got the sideline pass in uh, in Oklahoma." I said, "Well, I can get us. I can get you and I both on the sideline of the Cleveland Browns games to see Baker Mayfield." So he he made me promise that we would we would go and do do some of that. Yeah, now you. Yeah, that'd be great. Jr. Browns fan, right? Yeah. Yeah. Get some, awesome. Get some Browns gear on Jr. Yeah. <laughs> well, isn't Jr. a Steelers fan? He's a Steelers fan, but uh, you know what? He was mainly a Steelers fan because his wife Jan was a yeah, Steelers fan, yeah. and uh, she was Jan was actually from Pittsburgh, and so that that's where that came. I think I think we could maybe we may be able to sway him a little bit. Yeah, get some, get but I don't know. You know, it'd be tough to be a, to to you know to. Uh, Divide your loyalties between the Steelers and the Browns, wouldn't it? Yeah, you got to pick one. You can't do both. Yeah, you got to pick one, man. <laughs> yeah. All right, King. We'll talk to you uh, next week. You can follow us on Twitter at Dinner with King. We're on all the podcast platforms. You can go back and listen to the past episodes. Also, with our Jim Corn episode, got a lot of uh, great reviews on that one. And uh, we'll talk to you next week, man. Sounds good. Get well. The preceding show is a Pod Avenue production.